IMF Managing Director Christine Lagarde is set to travel to Nigeria and Niger. Before she left, I asked her about long-term challenges facing African economies. You're preparing to travel to Africa over the coming days. This is your first visit to Africa in your capacity of Managing Director of the Fund. What are the main objectives of the visit? I'm really going there to listen and to appreciate what is expected of us by the African countries, by the African governments, by the African people as well. Because it's a, it's a region of the world which is facing both huge challenges and huge opportunities. Mm -hmm. And if we can help in any shape or form by providing technical assistance, by offering policy advice, uh, using our best brains, and by making available the resources that we have and to give credibility to the reform programs that some governments have announced and are implementing, then the better. Now, what is the economic outlook of Africa given the European crisis and the impact it could have on African economies? Africa, uh, particularly sub-Saharan Africa, has done quite well over the last decade. If you look at the, the average growth rate, um, you look at something anywhere between you know, 5 and 6%, and, and it varies from country to country. But it's, it's quite significant. Uh, some will argue that it is not enough to respond to the market needs, to respond to the young population that is coming to uh, the, the market and uh, who is looking for jobs. So anything that can be done in addition to what has been achieved over the last decade will be extremely helpful. You've asked me about the spillover effects or the ripple effects of what is happening in Europe. Clearly, all countries around the planet are going to be affected by what is affecting Europe at the moment. And it is therefore critical for all that the Europeans, with international support, with IMF playing its part as well, be able to respond to the current situation. African countries generally have uh, a strong partnership with European countries. A lot of the trade, for instance, between uh, African countries has been historically with European countries. If I look at Niger, for instance, that I will be visiting, the lead trade partner of Niger is France. And uh, many African countries have tight relationships uh, with Europe. But the situation is evolving. And there is clearly a tendency now to trade regionally more and to also trade with Asian countries. This is a recent development which is good for African countries because it allows them to hedge their position and not be excessively at risk of what is happening in Europe, for instance. And how can the fund help African countries cope with the impact of this crisis on their economies? Well, as you know, the, the fund has uh, some specific programs for low-income countries. Uh, we have a program that is the uh, uh, PRGT, which is Poverty Reduction and Growth Trust, which uh, finances 29 African countries in sub-Saharan Africa at the moment to face the difficult circumstances that they, that they have. And we are really uh, very concerned uh, about the spillover effects of the European crisis. And we want to make sure that we can make available uh, concessional lendings and resources if and when um, needed and requested by the countries. The same will apply to middle-income countries. There are in Africa some middle-income countries that could also be exposed. And uh, the fund has a, a variety of instruments, one of which is the uh, PLL, the Precautionary and liquidity line that is also available for middle-income countries that are facing a difficult situation as a result of the European crisis, for instance. Now, let's talk about the long term a little bit. What are the long term challenges for Africa? The long term challenges are also the long term opportunities, depending on how you look at them. But clearly, it's going to be a question of creating inclusive growth that will generate jobs. 
jobs is what is going to be most needed in African countries. When you look at the demographics of Africa, you're talking about 900 million inhabitants, half of which roughly, take it or leave it, depending on countries, are under the age of 20. And this young population is both the strength of Africa as well as its major challenge because we all want our children to have jobs and the children of Africa are no different. They want jobs when they grow up and when they uh, arrive on the, on, the, uh, on the job market. So to that end, clearly African governments have the responsibility to create the environment where both the private sector and the public sector feels confident investing in African countries in order to create the job opportunities for the young people. Thank you, Madame Lagarde. My pleasure.